YouTube, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new. Um, as you saw from the thumbnail and the title, I know I say that every time, but you get it. As you saw from that, um, I ordered a uh, ballast for my tractor because I needed one. Um, I, I get a lot of jobs where I'm just doing mulch, or I'm just doing rock, or I'm just picking up logs, or, you know, just using the front end loader. And a ballast box is what I thought would be the solution. A lot of the times I just keep my, my wood chipper or a box blade or something like that. But it's very large and cumbersome. Um, you know, as far as maneuvering and stuff, I don't like having something hanging out like that and could risk plowing into something. And it's just like extra worries I have. Ballast box is small. You can add a lot of weight to it. Uh, so that's the route I went. Let me guys show you what I got. I ordered this off of eBay. It's a Vivor, Vivor, however you say that, uh, ballast box. It says you can add about 800 pounds to it. Um, I calculated, let me look at my calculation while I'm kind of walking around and showing you guys this. Because I measured it and everything and got the cubic footage. It looks like we should be able to get one, two, three, four 80 pound bags of concrete and four 60 pound bags of concrete in it. And the reason I got the 60 pound concrete bags in there is my local Lowe's, that's all they had. I normally get the 80 pounds, but I got the 60s and then I did the little calculation. So I should be able to get four and four inside of here. Uh, it says you can put gravel or, um, you know, dirt, sand, whatever. It's got this little door you can empty this stuff out. But I'm going to be honest, some of these welds look really cheesy, especially stuff that's holding, you know, all that weight on this area right here. So I'm probably going to go back over. I'm probably going to grind a little bit of the paint off and go over some of these welds, especially stuff like this. I mean, I don't know about that, but I'm going to go back over, it, you know, with my welder real quick. And as you can see, that is how I set up this, uh, what I'm talking about. This is how I set up all my other attachments, where that is right there. And I can't adjust that, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is figure out how much I need to add to make that work. Um, I made a video in the past. Actually, I deleted that video. I didn't even post it on YouTube. Never mind. But I had the same issue with a hitch. Um, I just got two pieces of flat stock and welded and made like an extension. And that's what I'm going to do here because I'm not going to modify my hitch for that I use that setting for all my other attachments when I can just modify this attachment. Uh, since I'm welding and grinding on it and all that stuff, uh, it's not that big of a deal. But uh, the plan is go over some of these welds. I'm going to tack this door in place. Okay. And then I'm going to make a bracket to make this to where I can just back up and pick it up with my quick attach. And then I'm going to do the concrete today. I'll let it kind of set up overnight. And then tomorrow, I don't know, I haven't really decided. I bought the paint. I might paint it black because I like the color black. It kind of matches everything, you know. Um, but I haven't decided if I'm going to paint it yet. So I might not. But if I do, you'll see it in this video. Let's go ahead and break the welder out and fix all the welds and figure out what we need to do there. So I had my welding gloves on and didn't realize I didn't turn the camera on. But I tack welded the, you know, I just put two tack welds for that door. And uh, it's not going anywhere. I have a Harbor Freight welder. So it, it, let me tell you, it does great with like quarter inch thick material, but thin stuff, you, I, I put it on the minimum setting and it blows right through it. Uh, it probably doesn't help that I'm using flux core instead of gas and all that stuff, but the tack held just fine, obviously. Um, it's not going anywhere and it'll hold good enough for me to get this thing filled up with concrete. Um, I ended up welding this on, I, you know, welded these... I went over these welds is what I'm trying to say. Went over these welds here, here, and on the other side, obviously. And I just cut two pieces of quarter inch flat stock here and here and welded that on there. And next, all I've got to do is see this size hole right here. I think it's like a 5 8 I just got to measure on both of these and drill myself a 5 8 hole. And uh, then we'll be ready to connect. But the next thing I noticed is... These pins are a heck of a lot lower than the lowest setting of my quick hitch. So I'll probably just get some six by sixes or something. I've got wood laying around and I'll, uh, before I put the concrete in, I will run a piece of all thread or something through and cut myself some six by sixes and bolt it to the bottom. And uh, the reason I'm gonna use all thread, I hope I have all thread, but the reason I'm gonna use all thread if I have it is because I can, uh, you know, get everything mounted and when I fill it up with concrete, I can't mess with that all thread anymore, right? 
So that's going to allow me to be able to unbolt this piece of wood if it ever gets damaged or rots. Because I, I hope this thing lasts longer than a piece of wood does. I would imagine it would. Um, I also, this thing didn't come with lock washers here, so I just kind of tack welded there and tack welded there in case, you know, if something comes loose. And if these pins ever get damaged, I could easily just break that. Um, that's just kind of more so to hold that nut and hold this from coming loose. Um, I might go back and tack weld that. I just got to thinking because this this could actually come loose from that. But I might actually tack the thread to the nut. We'll take it a second. But yeah, that's what I got going on here. Let's get these holes drilled and then we'll figure out what we need to add to get our distance right to be able to just back up and connect it. That worked out pretty good. Um, I had a 5 8 drill bit, but the hole was still a little bit too small. I had calipers, I didn't measure, but I'm guessing this is a metric pin. So I had to use a step drill and go the next step up, like a step drill bit. I'm sure you guys know what that is if you're watching this. But uh, And then I had to go one step up from that, and that got me in the ballpark of where this thing should be. Um, so that that all this worked out perfect. This is where it needs to be now, and this is where it needs to be. The issue, like we said before, is my three-point arms are as low as they will go, and there's still a pretty good gap right there. So what I've done is cut some six by sixes, and I thought, man, I thought I had all thread, but I don't. I'll probably just drive a couple of lag bolts in it and leave it like that. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna get the holes drilled and get this mounted. I had four six inch lag bolts, and I went ahead and pre-drilled the four holes and went ahead and lagged the six by sixes in there. And those lag bolts actually pulled, uh, pulled the wood perfectly up into this channel. It was really tight and wasn't originally going to fit. You can see how it kind of formed the wood too. It was smashing the water out of it and everything. So definitely got a good grip to it. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you the back side here. And it's pretty cool. My concrete mixer is the perfect height to sit over this thing. So I'm going to get my concrete mixed and just dump it straight in. Um, I don't think too much of the water will run through this crack. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think everything will work out just fine. But I'll go ahead and get the... Um, concrete mix and smooth off and show you the finished product there's the concrete finished up this is the next day by the way obviously because this stuff's already kind of set up pretty good um it got cold last night that's why it's not completely hard but um i think it turned out good the i don't know if my calculations were wrong or if those bags of concrete had more concrete in them than they said but uh, I double measured everything and calculated and came up with the same answer. So, um, but I was only able to fit four 80 pound bags and three 60 pound bags. So I had three 60 pound bags left over. But, and I also, I had a bushing right here. So that ended up being perfect. Um, I have a whole bucket of stuff like this. So it's nice to have around. I have decided I'm going to go ahead and paint it black. Um, I'm just going to get my little sander and kind of scuff up the paint real good and then I'll paint it real fast. So let's go ahead and do that. Got all the shine took off of it and it's ready to be painted now. Um, it's kind of windy so I'm sorry if you guys can hear that but nothing I can do. Let's get this painted right quick. I'm standing in my shop. Before I go outside I was going to kind of tell you guys it's really windy so if you hear a bunch of crackling that's what's going on. I think this turned out really good. I sprayed it with an oil-based enamel paint. Got it from Tractor Supply. Quartz only like $8, so it's really cheap. And I used the Harbor Freight uh, high volume, low pressure paint sprayer. I think it was like $9 or something with a coupon. So definitely didn't spend too much money on that, but I'm really happy with the way it works. Uh, me adding that made everything completely perfect. I saw some bad reviews because people were complaining about that. I don't personally understand why a lot of things don't match it with a quick connect because it's like kind of a standard measurement but luckily i can weld and stuff like that and it wasn't that big of a deal it didn't take too long to do this i think the paint turned out really good um i'm kind of i will update you guys because i'm kind of leery of this it just seems like that's not very strong especially with this thin metal and on the other side uh, when I added the concrete, I noticed water was actually leaking out right there. Oh man, I just touched the paint. Uh, but anyways, I noticed water was leaking out right there. So I don't know. I'll update you guys if I have any problems. I'm going to get a lot of use out of this because you see how small this is. It's not very big and it weighs a, a good bit. And the reason I needed this is because... Let me get back in here because it's not windy. 
the reason I needed that is because uh, I have a lot of really tight jobs, and this is a pretty decent sized tractor anyway, but I have a lot of tight jobs where I'm doing mulch or rock or just going back picking up logs and stuff like that, and I felt like something like this would be a heck of a lot better because I wouldn't have to worry about a box blade or one of my other attachments hanging out and hanging a tree or hitting something because I have backed into trees and stuff like that, and this is not good, <laughs> okay? Um, this is it's not really sticking out too far, so I don't have to worry about it, but hope you guys enjoyed watching me modify this thing and painting it and adding concrete and all that stuff. If you guys would like to see more things like this, let me know. I do a lot of random stuff like this. I just don't film it half the time because I don't figure anybody would be interested in it. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.